Hello and welcome back to Phil's Drone Zone and welcome to part five of Learning Piece by Piece, the complete beginner's guide to working in Motion 5. If you are a first time visitor here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that bell so you can be updated when we upload the future videos in this series. Today we are going to be looking at the text sequence behaviors and how you can create custom texts um, and individualize your texts um, to suit the projects that you're working on. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've created first. We've made a gradient background as we've done before. Just right click, select the gradient, right click, edit position, and then use the sliders to change the position of the, the gradient. That's what we've done before in the last tutorial, so you should be fine with that. Okay, so I've made a dark background so that my text will show up. And so let's add a new group, go to project, add group, and then we'll add some text into that group. So let's just type in some text, something like that, hit escape, and then go to the inspector, center align the text, and then on position, reset the parameter to center it. I'm just gonna scale it up so that we can see what's actually happening here. Okay, so now let's go to behaviors, text basic, and we'll grab one of these. Uh, let's go scale in, and we'll see what happens to our text. So I'm gonna just uh, shift forward to 61 frames, two seconds in, and then I'll select the sequence behavior, and I will hit O on the keyboard to select its out point. And now what I've got is the text scaling in as exactly it's set on the tin. So each character scales in one after the other. So now let's go to behaviors see behaviors at the top here and then just scroll through these you can see that text animation text basic text continuous text energetic text glow etc etc and there's about 150 of these things um, already preloaded and you can see that they're set in pairs in and out and they're all pretty much like that so one is for animate in one for animate out so you can create a ton of great effects, preloaded effects, just straight out of the box. Um, some of them are good, some are not so good, and some of them I would never touch in a million years. But the great thing about them is that you can alter and tweak all of them um, to suit your needs. And we'll see how to do that in just a short little while. Okay, so now let's go back to our text. Um, scale in the basic one we use to scale in and let's have a look at how they put that together now I can see there's a little bit of opacity fade going on there and a little bit of scaling in and if we open up the controls here you can see they've used the parameters of opacity and scale and they've scaled it up from 50% um, on the um, scale on X and Y and they've scaled it from zero on opacity so what we want to do now is try and recreate that um, from scratch. So we'll just delete the scale in. We'll go to text animation and add sequence text. So when we added the sequence text, now you can see when I move the slider, nothing's happening. And that's because even though the controls are set up, I actually haven't given it any instructions on parameter behavior to alter. So let's, you can see there's an add and remove here. Let's add opacity. If you remember, opacity was one. Drop that to zero. 
let's just, uh, before we do anything else, just set, move the playhead to 61 as we had before, and then hit O on the keyboard. And now as you can see, what we've got is each character uh, fading in one by one. Let's add scale, which was the second parameter they used, and we'll set X and Y at 50. And now what we've got, if we change, we, if you remember we had the spread at 2, and then ease out. So now we should have recreated exactly what they had in the scaler. And that's pretty much how they made all of those preloaded um, sequence behaviors. So let's have a look at what the controls do underneath the parameter behaviors. It's, by default it's set up from, but we can change that to two, which is useful for animating out. Uh, as we've seen, we've got from, um, which is from um, and useful for animating in. You can have this through sequencing, which creates that nice wave effect. Through inverted, if you're using through, is useful for animating out. And we can change um, what is animated in. We can go to character. We can change to character without spaces, which means that that little space there is ignored. We can animate by word. We can animate even by line. So the whole line will come in as one. And we can, let's go back to character without spaces. We can adjust the spread, which is how many characters are animating at the same time. So the higher the spread, the more characters animate at the same time. And the direction, we can go forwards or backwards, or we can go from the center to the ends, or the ends to the center. And uh, before we move on, we can even just randomize which characters come in so that they're completely coming in randomly. Okay, so that's that. We can adjust the speed by making it a constant speed. You can ease in, ease out, or ease both, which means that it will be slower at the beginning and end. You can accelerate so it comes in quicker at the end and decelerate so it slows down at the end. So there's many, many, many things that you can do. Let's go back to ease out. And some minor things, you can um, change the amount of times that it loops. So if you set that to two, it'll play twice during the sequence behavior. Let's put that back to one. And then you can also adjust the start and end offset point, which just basically uh, tells it when um, to come in and you can uh, start it later or finish it earlier. But that's probably more useful when we do tutorials much later on. Okay, so now let's um, have a look. I set up a little bit of a text um, sequence here. I've got three um, text pieces. I've got text, sequence and behavior. And what I've done is I've just um, animated those. This is something I would never do. I like to keep text really simple, but I'm just set, I just set this up so that you can see um, what you can um, do with these um, text with this text sequence behavior. And you're certainly not going to find this in Final Cut Pro. So you can personalize your own titles and set them up to come in, animate in and out as you want them. So I've set, set it up so that everything, um, I've added a sequence behavior to each of them and I've set it up those to where I want them to come in. So I'm going to have the text come in first and then the um, sequence and behavior will come in after the text. So let's have a look how we did that. So we'll start with the text. So 
So, as you can see, the word text just scales in as we'd seen previously. So I added the sequence behavior, and then I just added opacity, set that to zero, and scale and set that to zero on Y. I then set the spread to three, set it to word, and then ease out. That was very simple. And then for the next word sequence, I added three parameters and I had a position. I just wanted it to drop down a little bit, so I raised it up on Y. And then I added opacity, set that to zero. And I gave it a little rotation on Y. And then I set that to ease out and set the spread to three. For the final one, I added um, the position and I just dropped that down a little bit so it would move upwards and the opacity and then I set it the sequencing to through and center to ends and ease out and then all of those things um, created those behaviors to animate out um, basically I just took the sequence behavior, right click and duplicate. And then with the duplicate, I just simply changed two from to two. And then I trimmed the end of the text to where the sequence behavior added so it disappears. And I did that for all of them. For the one that I used through, I used through inverted. And then just simply trim the text to where the sequence behavior ends and it will disappear. And if you um, create something that you really like and you want to save it, then just uh, we'll get rid of the background, we'll just disable the background. And then we'll go to File and we will go to Convert Project to and click Generator. Then go back to File and click Save As, and we'll name um, the text to Test or Text Test, and we will publish. But make sure that it goes to the folder that you want. In my case, My Generators. And it says I already have one, so I'll just replace that, and then I have saved it into Final Cut Pro. So let's jump over to Final Cut Pro and you can see in Final Cut Pro I've got my text, uh, my clip all set there and all I've got to do is now go to Titles and find My Generators in the Generators section and then find the text that I've just created. So as you would do in Final Cut Pro, just drag that onto the timeline and then we'll wait a second for that to render out. And then you can your title's all set up and it works perfectly well, just like a normal Final Cut Pro title. So it's not something that I would normally do, but it just shows you what you can do with the sequence behaviors. Okay, so that's it. So just go away, play with the text sequence behaviors and see what you can come up with and you'll be surprised what you can. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and click the bell so you can stay updated when future videos are uploaded in this series. And that's it for this video. Um, in the next video, we will be looking at, probably looking at keyframing in a little bit more detail. And, but now all that remains to be said is see you in the next video.